rectangles using Riemann sums. We're going to look at uh, both the midpoint rectangle and the trapezoid rule approach. Uh, one thing that is on here um, that I think would be valuable to know is how do you write this as an integral? Uh, so in integral form, this would look like negative 4 up to 0 of negative 1 half x squared minus x plus 5 dx. And the question is, how do we approximate that integral using uh, a couple of approaches? And we're going to look at the midpoint approach. So the first thing to do, uh, I usually enjoy just to give a, a general sketch of what this looks like. Um, we're interested in the region from negative 4 up to, uh, up to 0. The y-intercept is 5, and it's a downward-facing parabola. So it might look something kind of like this. Uh, whether it's that wide, hard to really say. I will say that it'll be safe to assume for the first couple of examples that we're always in the upper portion of the, uh, of the plane, which is to say positive uh, y values. Uh, so how do we actually do this? Well, uh, one thing to figure out is uh, how many rectangles are we using? We're using four. So that's going to be our n. So n is equal to four. And let's find our width, which is delta x. And that's going to be b minus a over n or the size of our interval divided by the number of slices. So that would be 0 minus negative 4 over 4, this 4 right here. And then that would be 4 over 4, which is 1. So that tells us from negative 4 to negative 3, that's one interval. From negative 3 to negative 2, negative 2 to negative 1, negative 1 to 0. The, the four natural intervals you'd expect in this region. So this is the space we're trying to figure out. How much of an area is that? OK. so. The first thing to do, really, once we have our, or the next thing, rather, is now that we have our, uh, our width, is to figure out uh, the area of each rectangle. So from negative 4 to negative 3, I have a choice. Do I choose the left value or the right value with which to make my rectangle? Because one rectangle could look something like this, right? Could also look something, if I choose the right value, something like that. But I'm actually going to choose a different number. I'm going to choose the midpoint, which, of course, here would be negative 3.5. And I'm going to choose that value to determine my height of my rectangle. So if you look at that rectangle very carefully, you'll see that part of it is above the curve. You're also kind of missing a little bit. That would be missed by a, uh, a different approach. So it's sort of a, a middle ground between the left and the right uh, intervals. So that particular rectangle has an area, a base width of 1, or delta x, and a height of f of negative 3.5. So that's my base, and that's my height. Base, and then this length right here, f of three point, negative 3.5. Well, uh, my next rectangle is going to be a base of 1 as well. And the height is going to be determined by, well, negative 3 to negative 2 is my next interval. The midpoint is negative 2.5, which f of negative 2.5 is right here. So there's my rectangle. So 1 times f of negative 2.5. And, and you hopefully see the pattern here. Negative 2, negative 1 is going to be negative 1 and a half. So base times f of negative 1 and a half. And then negative 1 to 0 is going to be negative 1 half, which would make that rectangle right there. So, oops, didn't mean to close that bracket. Plus 1 times base times negative 0 0.5. So rectangle 1, rectangle 2, rectangle 3, and rectangle 4. Notice that they all have the exact same base, which in this case is 1 anyway, uh, but in general it's useful to kind of factor that length out to keep you from having to multiply every single time. So I'm going to go ahead and find these by using a calculator, just because it's, uh, it's going to save a bit of time. So an efficient way to do this, in my opinion, is to just put it into y1, so negative x squared over 2 uh, minus x plus 5. Even though my interval is from negative 4 to 0, the actual values I'm plugging in for my heights are the midpoints of those regions. So f of negative uh, 3.5, just using the trace function here, trace gives me 2.375, 4.375, and 5.375 again. Just make sure to make an error there. Yeah, so you see some symmetry regarding the parabola here. OK, so those are our y values. Those are the heights. Each of the bases is times 1. So 1 times that, 1 times that, base times height. So if you add these together, you get the exact, sorry, the approximate area using four midpoint rectangles. So just 
to add these together. And you get 17.5. So there's your approximate area. Okay, uh, let's take another, uh, another example. This one deals with the trapezoid rule, uh, a little bit different. Uh, it's not rectangles, they're trapezoids. So here you have a parabola, x squared plus 2, a little bit easier to graph. Here's plus 2, plug in 1, and you'd get uh, 3. Plug in 2, and you would get a bit higher, 6, and then something like that. Okay, uh, using four trapezoids, okay, well, the formula for the trapezoid rule is uh, delta x over 2 times all of your bases, which remember are your parallel lines here, um, where the first one, which is normally A, uh, and the last one, which is normally B, are sort of independent, and then all the ones in between are doubled. Right, because they over they, they share. This line here belongs to whoops, that's from one to three. So um, this one here uh, belongs to this rect this trapezoid, but the other ones uh, are all overlapping. So uh, let's go ahead and find delta x. Delta x is equal to well, let's say three minus one b minus a over n, which in this case is four. So we have two fourths or one half. So my intervals are going to be from 1 to 1 half, 1 half to 2, 2 to 2 and a half, and 2 and a half to 3, which is not going to make for a very pretty picture. Nevertheless, we can still figure out how to do this. So uh, delta x is 1 half, so that's going to go right here, 1 half, over 2, so that's going to be 1 fourth when I simplify it, times all of my bases, except for the first and the last, they're all going to be doubled because of what we saw in the last video. So the first number is going to be 1, so that's going to be f of 1 plus double of all the rest up to the next to the last one. It's going to be one and a half because of my interval space. Two. Two and a half. The last one is three, so this is the next to the last one. And then those are all doubled except for that. And really all I got to do now is put this in the calculator. So one fourth, which again came from delta x over two, which furthermore came from the trapezoid area. One half base one plus base two times the height. So bear with me a moment, x squared plus 2. Let me show you an alternate approach here that some of you may uh, remember from using learning about your calculator in the past. I'm going to go to second table set. I'm going to start my values at 1, and I'm going to make a delta table here of 0.5, because 1, 1.5, one and, and so on. So second table, and there you see my values. 1 would be 3, plus I'm doubling these. 4.25 plus 6 plus 8.25, and my last one is f of 3, oops, f of 3 is 11. So that might be easier depending on whether you're a visual or graphical type person. 1 fourth times 3 plus doubling all of these, 4.25 plus 6 plus 8.25 plus 11 gives me 51 divided by 4 gives me an approximate area of 12.75. Oops, couldn't see that last bit. So that's approximately the area in this region. As you saw from the last video, you can actually use the calculator to find the exact answer and we'll see how it compares. Second calc choice 7 from a lower limit of 1 an upper limit of 3, 12.66, so pretty close. Alrighty, hope this helps.